Oh, hi. <laughs> you know, I almost didn't see you because I was so engrossed in hate watching this episode of the Richard Vobes show. You, you know, Richard Vobes, the bold explorer. Uh, 10 years ago, he was well known on YouTube for making charmingly harmless videos about nature walks through the county of Sussex. And then earlier in his career, he was uh, briefly a character on an unsuccessful children's television show for Scottish television. That Richard Vobes. Although the Richard Vobes of 2024 is an altogether different creature. His shows consist alternately of uh, wackaloon unhinged opinions, but Richard's crazy ideas about all sorts of things that he thinks he knows about but doesn't, abutted with his interviews, although that's what he calls them. To everyone else, they are zany infomercials featuring a gaggle of truly unsavoury grifters, conspiracy nutters, and charlatans, each trying to sell their wacky wares on Richard's channel. Because as we all know, Richard's channel has become a sort of showcase for all that is unsavoury in the world of conspiracy grifting. That's what Richard has become today. But is that the only reason why anybody with the, the slightest shred of sanity truly despises Richard Vobes? Well, that's the subject that I'm going to dig into a, a little bit today. And, and let's start with Richard Vobes' opinions. These monologues that I do every day that I put up on my YouTube channel, they're just my opinions. They're just opinions. They're just my thoughts. It's just Richard Vobes' opinion. That's all his monologues are. As these monologues, presented by your humble servant and interlocutor, are merely my opinions. I have an opinion. Richard has an opinion. All men have opinions. Human beings of all gender and ilk. Opinions abound. It's almost as if the cosmic forces that created our universe handed out opinions to every living thinking being of which I and Richard Vobes are but two examples of. So why should anyone become upset about this perfectly normal circumstance in which a man and a man have two differing opinions? Sometimes people get a little bit upset with me and they feel that I'm telling them what to do. I'm not. And I just wanted to make that absolutely clear that these are simply opinions that I am expressing. And we're all entitled to our opinions. We're all entitled to our opinions. Richard is entitled to an opinion, as am I. We both have opinions because we are living, breathing men of a certain age who like to say things on the internet. Uh, whether you were man, woman, or floating consciousness in the ethereal plane, I think it's a given that we are entitled to have those opinions. But did you notice the misdirection in the way that Richard is trying to frame this argument? He's suggesting that the reason why we might be irritated or, or infuriated with Richard's opinion is that we might believe that he is telling us what to do. And that is a thought that never actually crossed my mind in all the tens or maybe hundreds of episodes of Richard Vobes that I have been hate watching in order to cogitate, digest, and then bring this criticism of his presentation to you, my dear viewer. Richard does offer an opinion in a very sort of strident and confident way. He's clearly not giving instructions, but he is telling us what we ought to think. Um, you may completely disagree with my opinions, of course, and I make sure the thumbnails always say opinions. And if it's an interview with a guest, obviously that's the opinions of my guests. And I, and I put the word interview up there. Richard would like us to believe that when he's speaking his opinion, he's not responsible because it's just an opinion. And when it's a guest that he has personally invited on, recorded in his own studio, and edited on his own computer, and then finally uploaded to his own YouTube channel, it is also not his responsibility because those guests' words are their words and not his. It's a particularly feeble defence that takes absolutely no responsibility for anything, which should hardly surprise us because if we learn anything from watching Richard's show, 
it's a rejection of the normal kind of responsibility that goes with being an adult. After all, Richard believes that you might not have to pay taxes, that, that um, you can simply solve any problem by magical thinking. That is his main message. But if he doesn't take any responsibility for the content of his own show, then who should? Who is responsible for the content of the Richard Vobes show? And we must, I suppose we must do our own due diligence. Before we act on anything anybody says, we have to think, hang on a minute, where is that information coming from and is it reliable? When Richard uses the word we, as in we must do our due diligence, he isn't using the royal we. He's not referring to himself. He is in fact referring to some kind of strange agglomeration of producer and consumer, all as one entity. It's as if the responsibility for making sure that Richard Vobes' content is correct and legal is jointly held between Richard and the people who watch them, uh, th thus diluting Richard's responsibility uh, 200,000 times, that he bears only a shard of responsibility for his own actions. It's as if by watching his show we all become accomplices, his enablers, and, and therefore we have deprived him of the responsibility for choosing for himself, which is particularly worrying when so much of the kind of content that Richard promotes is borderline illegal stuff. Advice on how not to pay taxes, uh, ridiculous anti-vax conspiracy theory nonsense, uh, and uh, crazy, crazy stuff that might get a person into a whole lot of trouble. For example, we might respond with letters or templates or, I don't know, whatever it is that we've seen online, and then it could backfire on us because we've blatantly just followed something that somebody said and gone, oh yeah, that's a shortcut for something and I'll send it off. Not fully understanding perhaps the wording or the implications of doing that particular thing. It's almost as if Richard just then is having some kind of out-of-body experience, specifically the experience of a Vobes fan watching the Richard Vobes show. I imagining a, a person who, for example, takes Peace Officer Davies' advice and attempts to pay his council tax with a promissory note, and then, as an obvious consequence of this, finds himself with a letterbox first full of demands for missed payments, and then a tax liability order, followed by letters from collections agencies and maybe even a visit from the bailiffs, which could lead to repossessions and, and possibly even evictions. It's a horrendously obvious trajectory that Richard doesn't seem to care about, because he doesn't think that he is responsible for anything that he or the guests he chooses to include on his show have to say. The liability for encouraging this nonsense isn't with him. In fact, it's purely a case of buyer beware. That liability is diluted one over 200,000 times. It's that the blame is divided equally amongst him and his audience members. And if anybody is foolish enough to follow Richard Vobes' advice, well, it's not his fault, is it? We have to take and accept the liability ourselves when we watch content and say, well, is it true? It might not be true. The presenter may believe something is correct, but they may be wrong. This is the paradox of Richard Vobes. He claims to believe all of these things that he says in his monologues. Things such as the notion that if you receive a bill that is addressed to your name but written in block capital letters, then apparently, according to Richard Vobes, that bill is actually not intended for you to pay, but a, uh, a fictional entity that was created the moment that your birth certificate was signed by the council's registrar. It's a bizarre notion that hinges on a whole load of other truly bizarre beliefs, such as the idea that when that birth certificate was signed, 
some nameless investor generated a, a sort of pot of gold in your name that you can somehow tap into by uh, waving away bills, uh, signing them away with a flourish of the pen. It, it's truly bizarre. And I think at some level, Richard Vobes clearly knows that because he's backing off these things by admitting that they could be wrong. This whole ridiculous farrago of nonsense could be false. It doesn't really sound like Richard has any confidence in any of these theories that he has expounded in any of his monologues. But what about his guests? Surely they are experts, chosen, hand-picked even, for their sensible, sober expertise, uh, the, the knowledge that they can impart to the avid viewers of The Richard Vobes Show. Guests on people's shows, they may sound like they know exactly what they're talking about and they may have letters after their name, they may come across incredibly professional, but they may make mistakes, they may misspeak. It's strange that Richard is speaking in the third person about what is clearly his own business of creating a YouTube show. It's like he doesn't believe that he's even pushing the buttons there. It's almost as if there was a fictional entity that was created the very moment that Richard Vobes' birth certificate was signed, and it is that entity that is somehow creating, editing, and uploading his entire YouTube content, because Richard clearly believes that he has nothing to do with it. And this is a pattern we'll see when Richard tries to defend himself. He somehow switches case, the, the English language case. Uh, for example, in the next bit, he refers to himself taking responsibility. But I think it's very clear from the context that he's putting himself into the uh, metaphorical shoes of somebody watching his show. He, he's talking about people foolish enough to watch and believe what he says. Okay, if I act on that information, I have to accept that liability if it goes wrong. Um, so they'll do their own due diligence and check it out. Is that, does that make sense? Does that sound right? So if you are somebody who has watched the Richard Vobes show unironically, if someone unlike me who watches it other than in the spirit of pure seething hatred, and you have chosen to follow the advice given by one of the conspiracy grifting wackaloons, charlatans and ne'er-do-wells that he has chosen to feature as guest experts on his show, and if as a consequence you get yourself into trouble, what Richard is saying is, it's your own damn fault for being so stupid to believe in him. Richard is telling his audience members that if they believe a word he says, then you failed to do even the most basic diligence on what was claimed. You're an idiot. You're a gullible fool. You're a nitwit, says Richard Vobes, for having believed me. Um, we push back on this channel, as you know, against things like 5G, about the lawful situation, or the push back against the legal acts and statutes, and, and perhaps point out some of the things that the government have suggested which does not seem right. But again, we may be wrong. And I'm not saying that I'm right in any account, but it's my belief. But the thing about Richard Vobes' beliefs is that he has encouraged people to act upon them. Take, for example, 5G. He has encouraged his fans and followers to protest the, the expansion and the upgrade of the 5G network based on the ludicrously false theory that 5G is not uh, a telecommunication system designed to save energy and increase the capacity of the network, but it is in fact a, a deadly energy weapon that can fry people alive, or at the very least cause cancer and other deadly diseases. It, it's a ridiculous notion that Richard Vobes has presumably gotten from Mark Steele, Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. A and just as he expounds that, just as he wants to take the credit for having exposed these, uh, these terrible conspiracies that he believes that he is onto, 
he backs away and admits that his theories might be wrong. But didn't he just spend an entire day trying to stop a crew from doing their job, from upgrading a phone mast near to where Richard Vobes lives? If he's wrong, where's the apology? Where's the, where's the penitence that he might have just wasted a whole load of other people's time and money by being an obstinate pursuer of wrong conspiracy theories. I don't see anything like that from Richard Vobes. In fact, I think his claim that what he says might be wrong is simply another self-serving defence. It's, it's just Richard trying to, to wheedle his way out of the consequences of, of the obviously bad things that he has encouraged his audience to do. I think it's very important that we remain in honour, honourably doing things, rather than trying to, you know, you find a shortcut. And the shortcut might be perfectly legitimate to do, but sometimes, you know, we might take something um, from somewhere or buy something and then we decide, oh, there's a, there's a shortcut to paying that off with an alternative method that uh, we hadn't initially intended to. And so we may try something to get something for nothing. Richard needs to make his mind up because he can't have it both ways. It's either a blatant act of fraud to steal goods and services and then attempt to pay for it with a, a ludicrous instrument such as a, a handwritten promissory note, one that will never be honoured and never has any intention of ever being paid. Is that an honourable way to live one's life or is it theft and fraud? Uh, Richard, you, you just need to make your mind up about that because you can't have it both ways. You, you can't claim that uh, that you're living an honourable life, a life that is lawful and, and one where you are trying not to harm other people, and one where you're simultaneously telling people that it's okay to take these shortcuts, which sound to me suspiciously just like not paying for stuff that you've used. For example, the council tax, if you challenge the council tax and say, well, hang on a minute, where did I agree to pay this? The councils come back with the standard reply, ah, but you have to because it's in Acts and Statutes. It's in the Local Finance um, Act 1992, where it says you, are, you have to pay this tax. This is one of the big ridiculous lies of the sovereign citizen movement. The notion that if you do not consent to laws, then they don't apply to you. And not consenting is something that sovereign citizens are very famous for doing. It's the entire basis of their movement, that they believe that they are above all of the rules and regulations that apply to the rest of the population. Us sheeple who make sure that we diligently pay our taxes and follow the laws, that, that we are the NPCs because we haven't realised that we can opt out. It's a very careless way of living and perhaps if you're somebody who is cynically as Richard Vobes seems to preach but not practice, uh, you can probably go a very long way without getting into any kind of trouble, except maybe being demonetized from YouTube. But for the people who maybe are more impressionable, members of Richard Vobes' audience who might believe what is said on his show and, and take that as advice, well, they can get into a whole load of trouble. Uh, it's an example of how Richard is just so utterly careless. I think we just have to be very cautious, and this is why I'm just mentioning this really, that again, when we watch anybody who comes up with something that seems to be too good to be true, just make sure that it isn't just too good to be true, because it might be. Uh, so we just have to be a bit cautious on everything that we watch. Richard doesn't seem to have any self-awareness at all. He's lecturing his audience to be cautious about internet content that apparently is too good to be true. Internet content that makes 
wild claims, perhaps saying that you don't need to pay your bills or, or that you don't need to follow laws. And he's saying that if such content were to be served up in your YouTube feed, one should approach this with the utmost scepticism. Neglecting to mention, though, that he's just described the entirety of his own output, and that he seems to think that it is everybody else's responsibility except himself to be sceptical about the content, that for some reason he, despite being that the creator, the progenitor of this ludicrous farrago of twaddle and nonsense, he thinks he is the only one who apparently has no responsibility at all for what he has created. I personally do believe in all the things I'm talking about, but it doesn't mean to say that I'm necessarily right. And I would hate to think that anybody immediately just says, oh, well, just because Vogue says it, it must be true. He claims that he would hate it if somebody followed his advice without questioning, without doing the, the appropriate levels of due diligence. But that also seems to be another one of the Richard Vogue's lies, because he regularly features people on his show who have followed the exact same advice. People who claim to have gotten away without paying their tax bills, people who didn't pay their gas bill, and even were made homeless as a consequence, and for some reason are continuing to advocate for this ridiculous buffoonery. He revels in people taking his advice. He loves it when he is upheld as, a, as one of the, the, the key thinkers of the sovereign citizen truther movement. Richard is lying. That's all he can do. I hate Richard Vobes because he is a liar. Now, I may be wrong in all of this, I often am. It's only an opinion, you understand. It was all just his opinion. Every single thing he said, from the ludicrous theories about not paying one's gas bill or, or tax, or there being a, a pot of free money uh, waiting to pay for whatever it is you wanted to pay for, all you had to do was simply sign the correct form or, or say the right magic words. These were all Richard Vobes's opinions that were lapped up by a, a gullible, credulous, nitwitted audience, the, the 200,000 people who seemed to watch Richard Vobes without any particular ability to discern fact from fiction. It's their inability to do the kind of due diligence that Richard says they must do that actually makes them his willing victims. And that's what this is all about. And that is why I hate Richard Vobes. It's because he's an awful human being. He's a, a truly cynical liar who takes advantage of the people that love him the most in order to extract money from them, in order that that he can achieve his personal goal, presumably buying some land with the, the lovely Julia, so that he can live a peaceful life, not really giving a damn about all the people that he is exploiting by telling these ridiculous lies to. That is why I hate Richard. But um, I want to direct your attention to something, because I've also played a little trick on the thumbnail of this video, in the top right hand corner, is the word opinion. And that means everything that I just said is in fact my own opinion. And in fact, Mind of Steel viewers, you need to do your own due diligence on what I just said. Verify. Do your own research, as Richard Vobes often says. Find out if Richard Vobes really is a depraved liar who would gladly sell his own children if he thought that it would make him a small profit? Or is that an entire figment of my imagination? Because, like Richard Vobes, I could be wrong. <sighs> well, please report back via the medium of YouTube comments. I'd like to know 
What's your emotional predisposition towards Mr. Vobes and his uh, lovely paramour might be? Do you think I may have overshot the mark? Have I perhaps been a little bit harsh in judging him? Or maybe not harsh enough? Please, your opinion is wanted, and I look forward to ranting at you in a week's time.